YouTube is the second largest search engine behind Google. So like there's there's millions of people looking for solutions to their problems. Um, and it's just a great opportunity for you to be in front of the audience. Welcome to a new episode of Behind the Upload, our video marketing podcast, where each week we talk to interesting brands that are doing really cool things with video. I'm Joey Dowd, your host. In this episode, we're going to talk to Jelani from Cartfuel. We're going to break down a lot of cool things. We're going to talk about how he approaches YouTube, uh, his thoughts about creating tons of YouTube videos, uh, figuring out what your audience wants, and then dialing in there, uh, how he makes videos quickly. Uh, and also, he has a bunch of channels. We're going to talk about a lot of uh, strategies that he uses to create evergreen content and content that lasts a long time and continuously sends new leads, new clients, new customers uh, to his website. So thanks for checking it out. Uh, be sure to check out BehindTheUpload.com for more resources, show notes, transcripts, all that good stuff. Without any further ado, enjoy the show. So cool. So thanks so much for joining. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I love to chat about different things I'm interested in. So And video to... and YouTube is one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I love YouTube. It's actually how I got like introduced into like the internet marketing world. So whenever I have a chance to share any bit of knowledge, I know I, I just share it. Um, but I'm not like the YouTube guy, I guess, on Twitter. I just, you you saw the, the tweet, I guess. So I should tweet more about YouTube, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've been following you for a while. And so I know about, um, I can, you, cause you, you do a lot of kind of build in public and share about uh, cart fuel. So first off, do you want to explain what cart fuel is yeah um yeah so cart fuel is a payment form builder essentially and what we started out as we're not going to be in like two weeks or so but i'll just give you like the rundown <laughs> of what it is because we're actually pivoting um, okay we're pivoting rather soon but yeah so cart fuel started out as like a payment form builder for initially webflow um and then we kind of made the decision to be for everything and that actually on reflection that was actually a mistake because we became a program or software for everyone and we didn't really have a niche. We weren't really specific. So like the marketing was hard to dial down because you don't really know who you're talking to. Um, yeah. So in the future and then about like two weeks or so, we're going to be pivoting um, to HubSpot users. So I'm excited about mm. that. But yeah, that that's essentially what it is. It's a way for people to uh, accept payments online with Stripe or PayPal and then also be able to offer one-click upsells. So pretty much unbundling click funnels if you're familiar with that and um making it a standalone solution i feel like there are probably a lot of parallels we can draw from the experience you went through there and creating youtube channels but um but about your pivot yeah, though totally. is it um uh kind of same concept just on hubspot like i guess what kind of yeah. checkout stuff is on hubspot yeah so exactly there's none so <laughs> hubspot like in their core program, there's not a way for you to accept payments. Um, they do have a Stripe app, but that's only for invoices. So like if you're doing like e-commerce and you're trying to sell like your digital products or di digital courses or whatever, they don't have a solution. So actually in their community forms, they'll like people will be like, hey, like how can I set up a payment form, right? Um, and then they will they will direct them to apps on the HubSpot marketplace. So there's only one app out there right now. It's pretty expensive and they honestly don't have as many features as we do. So I feel like there's a, there's an opportunity to come in to cater to people who are in the digital marketing space, um, who want to use sales funnels, have that sales data go into HubSpot so that their sales teams can speak to the people who purchase or who don't purchase. So yeah, that, that's, that's where we're headed and that's what we're thinking about, um, and for that decision. That's super cool. Yeah. And I feel like that definitely helps in being more specific as far as like what you're for and who you're for. Yeah. So with the YouTube content for cart fuel, I know we could talk about it in the sense of like, you're making the content when you were the upsell platform right. for every platform. But do you want to tell me a bit yeah. about um, the YouTube content that you had for cart fuel when you launched that channel? And then we can talk about I know you have some other channels as well. But we can talk about kind of the thought process with what you're doing with cart fuel first yeah yeah sure so i i kind of fell into youtube like a, like 2017 i just put like a random video out and of course like when you start youtube like your videos versus videos suck um they were terrible but i i fell in love with like the idea that i can just be myself and be who i am and like teach people different things that i'm interested in 
Um, and that's how I kind of started my, my, one of my YouTube channels, like my main one. Um, and then I realized like, as I was teaching, I could plug affiliate links and like, I could plug the different resources that people would actually click on. And like, YouTube is the second largest search engine behind Google. So like there's, there's millions of people looking for solutions to their problems. Um, and it's just a great opportunity for you to be in front of the audience. So with cart fuel, uh, I have that same mindset going in, just making content that I know how to make, which is educating people on how to use different things. In this case, it's just cart fuel, educating people how to use cart fuel on Webflow or educating people how to use web, uh, cart fuel on um, WordPress, right? So there's, I was just making different videos of different platforms and how cart fuel can be used on those platforms. Um, but now with the pivot, we'll probably have a different direction of like the content, but essentially it's just my idea behind it was just making content for the different platforms because I knew people were looking up specifically how to create a sales funnel on WordPress or how to do one click upsells on Webflow um, or, you know, different things like that. So I was able to capitalize on that. And because I made that content, um, even though I only have 83 subscribers on that channel, I still get, you know, people from all around the world signing up to, to cart fuel and I don't have to do anything. Right. It's the best thing about YouTube. It's like, it's evergreen content. If you know how to, how to, um, formulate your content in that way, you'll be able to get people to sign up for things for years to come. Uh, and that's what I focus on when I'm making content is making sure that it's evergreen so that I don't have to, it's like, you know, build one, sell twice type of thing. It's like, I make one video and that video is digital real estate, as I like to say. So, yeah. Yeah. I meant to bring up, you brought up, you tweeted out, if you're building a SaaS product and don't utilize YouTube, you're doing yourself yeah. and your future profits a disservice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You really are. I think that, I think the, the biggest caveat with people with YouTube is like, I don't want to be on screen, but you don't really have to. Like I have YouTube channels and we'll talk about it later. Like I'm not, there's no person involved. Mm -hmm. And I think it's honestly a little better that way because with everything going on with people getting um, banned from platforms and like, uh, you know, people are just, I think a little bit more sensitive. So like if you're able to make content with no face, it's kind of better actually. Um, so you don't have to show your face, right? Like, but yeah, I think, that, I think the, I think that's the main thing is like people feel like they have to show their face or like they have to be really good on camera, but like all things you're going to suck at first. You just have to get the reps in, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, just to paint a picture of what the kind of content you're putting out as it's pretty much just your same setup right now of you narrating. We see a little bit of you on camera, but for the vast majority of the video, it's just a screen recording of yeah. whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying to teach people. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I realized that like I used to do intros and like they don't care about that. Like people just want to get to the content. Like they just want to know what they want to know. Right. So it's just I do a quick little intro, um, like 15, 30 seconds, maybe even less. And then I go right into what I'm going to show them because that's why they're there in the first place. And that helps with watch time and people staying along and then YouTube promotes it more. So, yeah. And the interesting thing too is the content you're putting out, it's addressing a problem that people have and they're searching for a solution, but they don't know about cart fuel, right? Is that a correct right. assumption? So yeah. like they're yeah, looking exactly. for the solution, they find your video and then your video just includes your product as one of the solutions. Yeah, exactly. Like the way I look at it is like, I'm an affiliate for my own product, right? So like I'm making content like affiliate would, which is showing them the back end. Um, and I do it in a way where like, I don't want them to feel pressure that they have to sign up. I just say, you know, hey, like this is what this can do. This can potentially solve your problem. And then you can sign up and make, based on the video content that you view, you know, you can make your own decision if you want to go check it out and sign it up. And I think that helps a lot because people don't want to be sold to. Um, you know, they just want to get the info that they need and then they can make their own decisions. Yeah. And, and did you ever put any videos out that were more about just like tutorials in the e-commerce space, but didn't mention cart fuel or did every single yeah, video? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my main, um, I have a Jelani, the marketer channel. It's mm -hmm. like the channel that I show my face the most on. Um, and on that channel, that's how I got started. Cause I used to, uh, how I got into the whole internet marketing space is I actually was a drop shipper. So like back in 2016, 2017, when it was like 
still profitable. I'm not as saturated. Um, that's how I got into the game. And I was showing people how to do different things, uh, how to find products and, you know, all that stuff. So that's how I got into the world of e-commerce, I guess you can say. And then, um, I did do a series. I, I like to do series sometimes showing people like from start to, uh, start to finish on like how to do different things. So I did do that one, um, with cart fuel involved. Um, and it seemed like people liked it, but again, like I'm still growing that channel. So it's not, it doesn't have that many views. Um, but I just want to show the possibilities of what cart fuel can do in, in that instance. You know, with the goal with the cart fuel channel, it's not, you're not trying to be a YouTuber and monetize the channel itself. Yeah. You're trying, to, you're trying to drive signups, right? So like, yeah, what, exactly. do you have any kind of numbers or just kind of rough, like gauges of like what? It, like what a video would convert or how many people would send over or like ballpark numbers? Yeah. So I actually did a count yesterday. It might be a little more now, but, um, since I started the channel, we had 83 signups, um, from YouTube specifically. Perfect. So like I had a little sign up, little drop down. I was like, where'd you, like, how'd you find us? Right. Um, so yeah, uh, YouTube was like 83 and then Google was like below it. But I don't have as many Google articles as I do YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean, every day it's still like climbing up, like sign up. So again, like I don't do anything besides <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just evergreen content. Like I literally just watch it. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, but then it gives me data, right? Like, so like I can see, okay, this video is performing the best and I need to make more videos catering to this particular mm -hmm. audience. Um, so yeah, I mean, the whole point of YouTube initially, if you're just starting out, if you are looking to um, start YouTube for your SaaS or your business, is like looking, uploading consistently, like for 90 days at least. Like try to upload one video per day for 90 days. I know that's really hard to do for a lot of people because of different scenarios. But if you can do that, you'll be able to get a lot of data really quickly and you can see, all right, this type of content, this video is going to uh, drive the most results. Therefore, I should double down on this content. And I think that will help you to understand like who you're catering to and the type of content that you need to create because YouTube will tell you like the, the drop off rate, like, all right, this is where they stop, stop watching. And then you can kind of modify the video, your future videos to uh, make sure you don't make that same mistake, whatever the mistake was. So you just got to look at the data um, that YouTube gives you, honestly. Did you do anything beforehand in figuring out what kind of videos or what kind of to topics to talk about? <clears throat> In a sense, they like keyword research or um, <clears throat> any of the other tools out there. Yeah. So for cart fuel specifically, um, I was using a combination of vidIQ, TubeBuddy, um, and Arefs. Um, I Arefs is more like for the Google side, but even though like even though it's more Google related, I can still find out like what type of content um, people are looking for because. If Google likes your video, it will include the video in the search results, which is a, a great way to get traffic. Actually, I have a video that's doing really well and that's, how, it's like just from Google, like, because they thought it was a good video. Um, but yeah, so like I would do a combination, but for YouTube, like I like to use vidIQ and TubeBuddy because they give you these indicators. Like you can look at the, uh, the competition versus the the uh, the search volume so like you can see like all right this is high competition mm -hmm. um the idea is you want to get low competition high search volume so you can kind of identify what terms those are based on vidIQ obviously it's an estimation they can't mm -hmm. they can't give you exact numbers but it's a great start my favorite is when i like search a term and i have both plugins running and then like one of them says it's like a great word to go after and then another one says it's a terrible word to go after right <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. You're like, okay, now what do I do? I don't know who to believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, you also posted about, you kind of did a mini series and you would push out the videos in your onboarding. Was that, do you want to talk about that strategy? Was that like an effective strategy? Kind of how did that work? And yeah, so. Kinda, yeah, merging the both. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, so I, those videos, so some of the videos that I, I, uh, I made, I include it in the onboarding. So like people watch them, I include them on the, the landing page. So people watch them. The idea again, is just to get people to watch as much as possible of the video. 
um, so that YouTube promotes it. I haven't found, based on the data, I haven't had a video that's like exploding. Although I do have some videos with like hundreds of views, which is a good indicator that in the future it can just continue to climb. Um, but I like the strategy instead of like the onboarding, I like using the list that I've built. So sign up the users who actually sign up to cart fuel. I email them when I have a new video out and I say, Hey, like, you know, this video will teach you X, Y, Z, you know, go watch it. Right. And that gives me a good starting point because if I have a hundred people in the first, you know, 24 hours watching this video, then YouTube's like, okay, this might be a video we want to give a bit more attention to. Obviously a hundred views is not that many, but if you're just starting out and you don't have any views, like it's a good indicator for YouTube. Like, okay, this is content that people are actually watching. Uh, maybe we should include this in our search terms or, you know, on a sidebar. So it's like, it's just giving yourself an edge. How can you give yourself the best possibility for YouTube to recommend your video? Um, and that's including using your audience. So Twitter, email, um, Facebook, if you have a, you know, even your personal Facebook, that's what I do as well. I post those videos on my personal Facebook that people, for people who follow me there. Um, just to get those clicks and those views to help me out. Yeah, I think that's a good takeaway, especially if you're like starting from scratch of like what other audiences you already have built up on other platforms that you can post that promote out your your video. I know email is obviously probably the best way. I know with the other platforms, they get kind of weird when you start posting links to other yeah. sites and like they don't do yeah. the best in like promoting your posts that, right. Have, right. that take you off the platform. But uh, yeah, still better than nothing. Yeah, um, one thing I learned on Facebook specifically is like, um, write your write your description of the video, like give a little story, like a little background, so it looks like a, a natural post. Do not include the link on the actual like post itself. Include the link to the video, like at the end of the post, like hey, the link to the video is in the in the comment section, and then put the link to the video in the comment. I felt like I feel like that has um, helped me because it's like it's not a direct link. So Facebook's algorithm still kind of pushes it to the to my friends. Um, but yeah, that's something you could test out. Yeah. So have you been putting I've I've seen that on LinkedIn. Have you been putting that on Facebook too, of like putting the actual link to your video or article or whatever you're trying to promote in the comment? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then just say, you know, go check it out and link in the in the comments. Do you upload like your thumbnail as an image? So like it people kind of have that attention grabbing image. I just put the link. I think um Facebook I know when you make your post. Where... When you make your post, are you like Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't you're do just that doing text. I just yeah, I just do straight up text and then I just put the link and then yeah. Got it. Let's talk about kind of your workflow. I want to talk about your other channels, but yeah. let's talk about kind of your general workflow first. So like you want to walk me through let's start with like research scripting. I know these are tutorials, but are you like doing outline? Are you doing a script? Are you do kind of how how do you map out what the video is gonna be? Yeah, so I have a running sheet of videos. So I think the hardest part about YouTube is like, you don't know what content to make and then you just give up because you feel like you don't have anything to talk about. So I have a running list of ideas that I just keep. So like whenever I'm ready to make a YouTube video, I can just pull from that sheet. Um, and I kind of I kind of just give the title, make sure that the title is attention grabbing, um, a general idea of like what I'm going to be promoting. Um, and then I just go for it. I don't script anything. Um, for my other channel, I do have a script, but for like, my main channel, like cart fuel, I don't really script anything because I know what I'm going to say pretty much. And then I can, if I mess up, I can just like edit it out. Right. So, um, I don't script and I feel like I, when I have tried to do a script, um, I'm just, I don't know. It just doesn't come across mm -hmm. as natural and like, I'm mm -hmm. not authentic. So like, I rather just talk like I'm talking to a friend and that has worked really well for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good tip. Yeah. I feel like sometimes scripts work. Sometimes it comes off unnatural and then it just feels yeah. robotic. Yeah. I think it's also the type of channel too. Mm -hmm. And like the audience that you've generated, like what they expect. Um, like if they expected you to just be talking off the cuff and then I don't know where to start scripting and it, it just seems, it just seems weird. Yeah. And then, so once you're recording, what kind of, uh, you know, we see your mic, but like, what's the sort of hardware you're using? What are you screen recording with? Yeah. Yeah. I actually wrote stuff down because okay. <laughs> I didn't want to forget. So for editing, I use Adobe Premiere. Um, my mic is a short SM7B with a cloud filter. Um, I use OBS for just recording my screen. And then for my camera, I have two Panasonic's 
Lumix G7s. Um, and then for the lighting, I have two Aperture ALs, which are like these little ones for the back. I don't know if you can see these. Yeah. And then yeah. I have I have like this up here. <laughs> Light storm. Um yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Actually, one of my cameras just broke, so I only have one Panasonic, <laughs> Panasonic G7. But um, yeah, that's it's pretty much it. That's 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 all I have. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty, pretty simple, simple setup. Most of the stuff that you're in, you're just doing screen recordings. Um, yeah, anyways, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like, I don't need anything too crazy. Um, yeah, I think my computer is the main, like, the biggest investment I made because, I, like, when I started getting serious in YouTube, I like my computer couldn't handle, I just couldn't handle everything that I was trying to do. So I invested a nice sum of money into a nice computer. And that's pretty like the biggest investment that I've made for my studio, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Your setup's pretty nice. Your background and everything's nice. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, it, I've repurposed a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, I didn't get this all for YouTube. This was from, we. I do video production. So I had the stuff yeah, lying nice. around and now it's like, I'm, my my goal here is to keep everything on wheels because I always keep reshuffling it. Uh, <laughs> so that's been like my 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 mission lately is like buy like I put wheels on tripods and stuff, so now I could just try to shift it around and like pop up studios real quick. Yeah, nice, cool. Um, and so once you're uh, once you got the edit done, um, you have any thoughts behind thumbnails, uh, titles, descriptions, anything there that you found like works better? Yeah, so I have a, a little template that I use for every uploaded video. I can uh, shoot it to you if you want to uh, give it to your audience or something. But, yeah, I can put it in the show yeah, notes. I use, yeah, I use a, a template that's basically like the first two sentences because that's how it shows up like on the description. You want to have like a good call to action, the first two. And then after that, I do a three sentence explanation of the video um and then i do a kind of bio of who i am some hashtags and then at the bottom of the video i do two links of the video link so like the video link that i'm uploading i put those two links at the bottom of the description uh, I learned this strategy from when I was, so I used to work with, I don't know if you're familiar with Dan Locke, but I used to be on, um, on that team before like he like imploded basically. But basically I was on that team. I learned a lot about, cause he grew his YouTube to a million subs in like less than a year. And I, I learned a lot about like how they, their workflow and like how they do things. So I kind of adop adopted some of the things that they were doing. Um, as far as like titles, I like to keep things under. So let me just check. Can I go back to that? You... So you're saying the actual yeah. URL of the video, you are putting that in the description as well. Yeah. What's the thought behind yeah. that? Yeah. Um, honestly, I never asked them. I just did it. <laughs> I just copied it. <laughs> uh, but it, ever since I did it, it was like, it started working. I think the idea is um, because sometimes I also include links to other people's videos. Mm -hmm. Um, because the idea there is like to have comparative videos. So YouTube's like, okay, this video is kind of along in the same realm of, of the other video. I think including the own, like our own link in the description, um, helps along, helps along that, that line of thinking. But is there a call to action to it? Like, Hey, share this video with this link or is it just the link? Um, let me show you. <laughs> But yeah, no, I just literally just like took this idea from them. All right, I'm curious. And... Yeah, I'm curious to try this out. And when you say you put links to other videos, uh, other videos on your channel or like totally other videos from other people's channels? Totally other people. It could be either or, but like okay. sometimes I do other people. So like, for example, if I'm like t making a video on something that I've never made a video on before, it's kind of like a new video content idea that may include someone else's video that already has a lot of views. Um so that I can get a bit of clout, if you will, from them. So this video did really well. And this is another strategy that I did. Like I trafficked the video. So I sent the traffic from this video to another video, which is from my other channel. And we could talk about that. But basically that video had 80,000 views and I was like, okay, let's make a part two. And then I just said, hey, part two to this video is on this channel, go watch it. And now this video has 90,000. Um, 
so like you can do stuff like that as well, which is like basically take traffic from mm -hmm. your your older videos and then send traffic to like an updated version. Um, but anyway, so this description, like if you can see, like I was like, okay, the first line, I want them to see that. And then I just said a three sentence, subscribe to me. Um, then I have some playlists that they can go to. And then down here is like where they can connect with me, blah, 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 some hashtags. And then down here is what I'm talking about this video. It's a one liner, one sentence, and then no call to action is just uh, the link the two twice. Link. Yeah, the link twice. So weird. Um, All right. Yeah, it yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, it's it, it works. So is it like a glitch in the um, matrix or something? <laughs> yeah, I know. But I've noticed a lot of YouTubers actually do something similar. Um, so yeah, I just follow what other people bigger than me do, and to work. I, I I think that's a good hack. I mean, yeah, if it's working for them, then uh, I, why, yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's gonna hurt you to put the unless it gets too no. spammy or something. Right? No, not at all. And it's YouTube. It's not like a link that. It's not like an external link. It's a YouTube right. link. So right, right. they're not going to penalize you for that. Right. Um, and so, yeah, do you want to talk about the uh, your other two channels? So you have uh, Jelani the Marketer and Odd Money TV. Yeah. Yeah. So Jelani the Marketer was my first, um, was my first channel that I started. And... I don't know. That channel has been on and off. Like I'll, I'll get in spurts. Where, like I want to make content and then I don't but, like, I know that the content I'm making is evergreen. So like, I still get dividends, like for the affiliate promotions that I'm promoting on there and stuff. Like, so I know it's, it's still doing me well. It's just, I have like this thing where like I get, like, I don't know the direction that I want to go in, but now that I'm doing cart fuel, like I'm really confident in, in cart fuel. So like, YouTube kind of took a, a burner, if you will. But yeah, YouTube's my, July of the Market is my first YouTube channel. And that's where I did a lot of testing, trying to see a lot of different ideas, uh, it, what works, what doesn't work. And, you know, if I was more consistent, I would have way more followers. But I'm just like, I'd rather put my energy right now into car fuel. Which well, is why I was you describe the content the, uh, on that channel. It's more kind of ever, yeah. like marketing, evergreen content. What? Yeah, it's it's more marketing focused. Um, and I think because I, my focus right now is on Curfew, I'm not really building other marketing projects because like that channel was all about testing. So like I would test how to make money doing this unique thing, right? Or like how to make money drop shipping, how to make money by uh, uh, renting your YouTube channel, out. like just doing different things. Um, but because of my focus is on cart fuel, like I'm not doing projects mm -hmm. like that, um, which kind of sucks. And that's why I kind of want to, you know, make content again. But like for me, I'm like, oh, I want to just make content all the time. And then I get like sucked into like the context, <laughs> uh, the content uh, wormhole. And I just want to go down it forever because it's so fun. Um, but yeah, I'm super focused on cart fuel. But yeah, July in the Market is my first channel. And I do have content on there uh regarding cart fuel but also i don't want people to like think that um i'm selling them out with cart fuel like i don't want mm -hmm. my audience on there to think that like i'm just trying to sell them cart fuel um so i don't upload that much content on there uh it's probably like once a month or every once every two months or something um while i'm focusing on cart fuel then the odd money tv was like i built that channel because i was bored and i wanted to try again testing some ideas out uh, so yeah, I built this channel during COVID um, last year and I got a really good response of the combination of the time. It was like less than 10 minute video. So it was about five to six minute videos. And then the quality of the content, I taught myself how to edit really well because I was bored um, <laughs> and people started to like the content. So like now I have this channel where like people are like literally asking, can you please make content again? But then I'm like so focused on cart fuel that I know the effort and the energy it takes to make the quality, the type of quality content I would like to make. Um, so that's why I, I made that tweet. Like, yeah, I made this channel. And I could probably make it into a mini empire, and I know I could. Like, I just, I just have to make sure I'm staying focused and like seeing the bigger picture of where I want to go. Um, yeah, but I yeah, could totally suck you in. Now, Odd Money TV, that format. Uh, it's faceless, so right. So it's just narration yep. and yeah. a bunch of B-roll, right? 
Basically, and yeah, that channel, text, the, the channel that was stock footage. Yeah, that's a, that's the channel I was talking about. Like, I make a script for that one mm-hmm. because my husband's actually like that's his voice that uh, okay. is narrating. Okay. So he has a pretty good voice for narration, and I was just like, okay, cool. Like, I can make the script, you narrate, and then I edit. Um, but the editing takes so long. I, I know it's just like B roll, like, but then you have to find the right B roll that's in context with what you're talking about. So you're sourcing all these different, you know, images and videos and then editing it in a way so that it doesn't get boring. So it, it's time consuming for the type of content and the quality that I would like to have. It takes a lot of time. So I would love to find someone to do it. Um, but. I haven't really took a, a took a step in that direction yet, but yeah, yeah. Editing is always the secret time suck that you don't realize how much time it takes. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea because like July the market is just like I'm talking to the camera. I just mm-hmm. edit, put the audio in sync, and then it's pretty much done. And then odd money, there's no face, so you have mm-hmm. to keep the audience engaged. Um, and then when you're doing B-roll and like static images, it's like how do you do that? Yeah. Um, do a lot of jump cuts, but then that gets boring as well. So you have, it's like a, a balancing act. Yeah. I mean, also to give some context, that's, so it's just a channel about odd ways to make money, right? So your popular videos yeah. are how to make a 24 seven YouTube channel, uh, right. cashing in with worm farms. Is this also just stuff that you <laughs> kind of researched and like discovered? Yeah, so on- a hack, <laughs> for a hack for this, it was like, I saw, I don't know if you're familiar with trends. Um, yeah, it's like, a it's like a newsletter that talks about new ideas and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like, from all the right, hustle, there he did the yeah. research. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From the hustle, Sam Parr. So like there he did the research for me. So, oh, so was this adapting do... stuff from trends? That's some of the yeah, research. Exactly. Stuff. Y- yep. Yep. So like when I, uh, before cart fuel started to be a thing, I was telling Sam, like I was mes- messaging him on Facebook and I'm like, Hey, like this is a video that I did. Like we should do this for the hustle. And I don't think he understood at the time, like how YouTube could benefit him. And then now his YouTube channel, like they're putting so much focus on YouTube because it's just like, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's evergreen. I mean, it's like, it's yeah. so good for driving traffic. Um, you know, especially stuff that picks up once and yeah, I have videos from years ago and they are still like the exactly. top videos because they just like the algorithm just keeps pushing it out there and people That's keep discovering it. Yeah. Yeah. I love I, that. I did want to ask you also because you mentioned something else about uh Pinterest being yeah. like another evergreen platform. And I've really kind of ignored Pinterest. Um, but do you want to talk mm. about how yeah, what have you been put what have you put on Pinterest that worked for you? Because in my mind, Pinterest yeah. is like mostly like craft and you know, pretty photos and stuff like that. So what 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 kind of stuff have how have you used it? Yeah, so um, I was using it heavily about like two years ago now. Uh, I hired someone to do it for me, actually. She was just like, I would tell her, all right, this is the video. I need you to make an image and then post it. And she was doing it. Like she she had uh, some experience in Pinterest growth. Um, But Pinterest is awesome because it's also evergreen where like you can um, post that image of the pin and people will search it for I don't know, however long it, it lasts. It lasts a really long time. Like the the time that someone can find something could last like YouTube for, for a while. Um, so yeah, it was driving, it was driving quite a bit of traffic to um, my YouTube channel at the time when I was doing it. Um, so like I would just put a picture of the, the thumbnail essentially, but in a vertical form, like Pinterest style form, and then just have the, the YouTube link um, in, the, in the image. And then people would click through and then go to my YouTube. Yeah, I think Pinterest has a misconception that it's like only for moms and like, mm-hmm. you know, arts and crafts. But like, there's a lot of um, business Pinterest posts out there. Um, I think you just have to know how to u- utilize it. And were these for uh, Jelani the Marketer? These, these, the videos. Yeah. And, and when you did the vertical format, did it have um, kind of like, like a keyword or text or like a call, like a enticing yeah. title? Yeah, yeah. It would have a title that was, you know, obviously in in the same context of the video. And then she would include hashtags as well. Um, But yeah, so I'm not a Pinterest expert by any means, but I do know a bit about it. And I think people don't give it enough interest, I think. I think it could definitely be used within like the, the organic marketing realm. If you use YouTube 
as the center and then have these like other like aspire to like have these other legs of platforms that you can promote that video to to give yourself uh an edge because again like if you are able to post a video for example on Quora is another evergreen um content place where like you can post a video there and people will find that video for years therefore allowing your youtube video to be boosted for years so it's about how do you how you get that fire started on youtube you use other platforms um even if it's a small amount of people clicking through it's still people clicking through that it shows youtube okay people are still looking at this video like it can still be boosted it can still be shown to people because people are interested in it and um with Cora, is that uh, like if you find a, someone's asking a question for like on upselling and you're able to post your video as a right. response, is that the concept? Yes. Yep. So um, the idea is because Cora got a little bit more like strict when it comes to posting links and stuff. But the idea is like to post one. So for every question that you answer, like three should be no links. So like three questions, no links, and then you put one and then it's like. It can it can include include a link, um, but yeah, you just post the, you post the video to the link, and Cora has a good thing where it actually embeds the video in the answer, so you don't actually have to click to YouTube. You can watch the video in the answer. Um, so yeah, it's it's also a good platform I think that doesn't get um, utilized enough. Yeah, no, I think that's a good takeaway. Uh, did you have any other kind of? insights or things that we didn't talk about you think uh would be useful i know you kind of you also have like a, a wide span of youtube use cases so yeah. i know we talked about kind of different you know youtube for SaaS, youtube as a youtube creator youtube as a faceless youtube creator yeah uh, you kind of cover the gamut so um i think the most powerful thing like aside from SaaS, like i think obviously you, you should but like if someone's just wants to get started with youtube like just talk about things that you're interested in and then you can start plugging things like I think it's an evergreen machine where if you have an affiliate program that you want to promote, like my favorite right now. And then that's actually why I wanted to start odd money again, because I wanted to figure out how I can um, how I can utilize active campaign because email marketing is like such a sticky product where like you can talk about it. This is a great tip. Like this is a channel that someone should make is just all about email marketing and get people to sign up to those different programs because once they're on the uh, program, it's really hard for them to get off. Like I love program promoting, promoting programs like that um, where it's like, it takes them. It's very, it's a lot of stress to get off the platform because for example, like email marketing, you would have to find a new solution, then import all your contacts. If you have automations, you have to recreate the automation. So it's like, it's such a hassle for email, but anyway, if someone wants to start a YouTube channel, you should start that one because you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> On how to make email marketing or how to... Uh, just trying, What's your like, what's your pain point? I'm trying to understand it. So, for example, I have a channel... I have a video on my Jelani the Marketer um, that I made like three years ago. And every month I get new people signing up to Active Campaign, And the video was talking about how to make automations inside of Active Campaign. Just one video just talking about that. It was like 12 minutes long. Um, and literally, I have every month I get people signing up, and then every month I get paid like sometimes a thousand dollars a month just like from this one video from an active campaign uh, referral link. Yeah, just from that referral link because how email marketing works like as people increase their contact list, they pay more money. So then I get more money from that particular user because they're paying more money. Um, so like, I think the active campaign starts at like. 500 contacts and then as soon as you go up to like a thousand it's more money and then you go more so like if you're able to get those businesses or people who have really large lists you'll make a killing um see so yeah, that's why i was like okay like odd money i could definitely incorporate active campaign create a course like i was just thinking i was just having like a stream of consciousness that night um because i was like i can make so much money with this but like i also want to stay focused with cart because i'm having fun mm -hmm. and like um so that can be that can be something I do like uh, later down the line, but there's a free idea right there <laughs> for your audience. There you go. <laughs> free YouTube idea. Uh, all right. Well, thanks so much. Where can people find out more about you? Links and stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty active on Twitter. I think that's like the number one um, place you can find me. And my Twitter is Jelani since 94, uh, like since 94. Um, yeah, you can find me on there. 
And uh, yeah. All right. And I'll have links for that in the show notes. Uh, well, yeah. Thanks so much, Jelani. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of Behind the Upload. You can head over to the website, behindtheupload.com for more resources. You can also join our mailing list, get these alerts uh, when we have new episodes sent straight to your inbox. And please subscribe to the show and whatever your favorite podcast app of choice is, whether that is Spotify, iTunes, Overcast, uh, or if you just like listening on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. I will catch you in the next episode.